The Russian military has begun a brutal assault on the people of Ukraine. Without provocation, without justification, without necessity, this is a premeditated attack. The history of this era is written. Putin's choice to make a totally unjustifiable war on Ukraine will have left Russia weaker and the rest of the world stronger. President Biden, six months ago this week, responding to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And this week brought a dire warning about the safety of Europe's largest nuclear power plant. ABC's Brit Klinet is on the ground in Ukraine, tracking the very latest. Good morning, Brit. Good morning, John. Yeah, the daughter of a close Putin ally, Alexander Dugan, reportedly killed in a suspicious blast today. Her family saying she borrowed her father's car, suggesting he was the target. Now, Dugan is a staunch supporter of the war here in Ukraine. Russia says it's now investigating it as a murder. And look, if it turns out Ukraine is behind the attack, it would add to signs that Ukraine is willing and able to take its fight beyond Ukrainian territory. This week, six months into Putin's invasion of Ukraine, there are serious fears the fighting could turn into a nuclear catastrophe. Russia and Ukraine repeatedly pinning the blame on each other for the attacks that are threatening the safety of Europe's largest nuclear plant in Zaporizhia. The tense situation there sparking an exodus. We visited an evacuation centre in Zaporizhia as hundreds arrived from occupied Russian territory. We've been told to expect a huge convoy of cars coming in from the Russian occupied areas and here they are taking everything they have to find a safe passage and get out of here. This woman from Anerhada, the site of the plant, traumatised, saying it's bad there. We spoke with one of the plant's engineers, asking us not to show his face for fear of retaliation. It might well be like another Chernobyl, he says. If the storage is hit badly, there will be radioactive clouds and pollution. Global calls for independent inspectors to visit the plant growing this week, culminating in a visit with President Zelensky by UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. Common sense must prevail to avoid any actions that might endanger the physical integrity, safety or security of the nuclear plant and the facility must not be used as part of any military operation. Zelensky also meeting with Turkish President Erdogan, touted as a potential power broker. But a call between French President Macron and Putin appears to have made headway. Putin finally agreeing to an independent visit by the International Atomic Energy Agency to inspect the plant as soon as possible. And this week, the US also stepping up its commitment in Ukraine announcing plans to send a $775 million military aid package that takes the total of U.S. spending in Ukraine to $10 billion since the war began six months ago, with no sign of slowing down. Firepower to help Ukraine's fight in this war, including 16 new howitzers and sending 15 Scan Eagle reconnaissance drones used in identifying key Russian targets. The U.S. enabling Ukraine forces to attack Russian military in Crimea for the first time and focus the battle on occupied territories in the south. The toll on civilians continues. A firefighter at the scene sends us this body cam footage showing the destruction left when shells slammed into a residential building and a dormitory, killing six people and injuring more than 20. And six months on, the humanitarian crisis worsening by the day. People of all ages fleeing Russian-held territory to reach freedom. When we first saw, like, Ukrainian flag, we were like, yeah, we're... we're you guys cheered country. when you saw Ukrainian flag? Yes, and we're, like, feeling that we are really free people. And that there is a snapshot of what we saw in Zaporizhia. Desperation, relief, a reflection of what it's like to be free of those occupied territories, especially with that power plant, the largest in Europe, under threat. Now, six months on, potentially taking the destruction outside the borders of Ukraine. John. Thank you, Britt. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.